Well, he's figuring it out. How was your trip, Carl? Hi, everybody. Um, Hi. Welcome. Uh, today we are going to do uh, James Long's uh, level 15 critique. Ooh, this will be fun. It'll be brutal. Uh, James will need tissues. Nah, just pull in your leg. Your it's image right. will be perfect. Just like Richard's. You're at that upper 99%. Uh, <laughs> so I, ex I expect great things from you. Um, Mr. Long, why don't you tell everybody in the world who's going to watch this video all about you, who okay. you are, where you are, and what you like to shoot. Sure. I'm James, and I live in Iceland. Um, and from a photography perspective, I like to I focus mainly on landscape and nature work, but predominantly landscape work, um, shooting a mixture mainly digital because that's where I've, I've come from with most experience but more recently film cameras which i think i've got four film cameras now thanks to mark um and thanks to richard in the group an infrared camera now as well so i kind of like to i started out quite traditional with landscape stuff um but i've been experimenting a lot more as a result of this uh the group that we're in and, and the work that we've done so Hopefully, some of this level 15 stuff will show. Well, the idea behind the work I've, I've done here is to show what I've learned, I guess, over the last few months. We'll see if that's true. <laughs> yes, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, great. Um, I got your images. Um, so, what I'm going to do, I think, is we'll just jump right in, okay? Sure. Uh, oh, I have to warn you. The first image that fails knocks you back a level. <laughs> really? Oh, no, okay. just joshing you. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, there's no chance that you're going to fail this, so no worries. Uh, don't, don't sweat that. I'm just feeling really contrary today. Great. Right. <laughs> uh, I have to take my, son, my grandson out and buy him a new iPad today. And then uh, reconfigure it for him. So uh, that's going to be the other half of my day. So let's go right ahead. We'll share the screen. Uh, can you see my desktop? Yes. Fabulous. It worked. And I am all set up and ready to go. Um, we're going to start at the beginning. And we are going to just walk through these, these wonderful images of volcanic Iceland. Well, I cannot wait till we take our group there. Uh, I, I have to tell you, James, that's a bright, shining star in the future for us. So, Yeah, it would be great. It would be really good. Okay. Tell us about this image, please. Okay. This was um, – I went on a trip with my wife uh, early in May for a – for a bit of a trip out to the west of Iceland. So I've been there a few times. Some of the images you see it's all re uh, from the critiques before were from there in the west in the snow. But we went, this was the first time the snow had kind of gone. Um, so we, we we weren't very good, lucky with the weather. So the weather was pretty awful. And it was absolutely pouring it down. But we took a track off the main road that led through this volcanic um, uh, volcanic wasteland basically where it's just this black ash and, and rocks um, as we were kind of driving along and sort of having a look I just noticed that this this yellow shrub was kind of sat there on its own almost in the in the black so I stopped to get out to see whether I could get an image of it um, image of it with the kind of dark background um, and I happened to also kind of see that it almost mirrored the volcano in the background, the cone-shaped volcano. So this was taken with, I think, my, my widest lens, or certainly a wide wide lens, and um, low to the ground in the rain, with my camera covered up in plastic, um, to just try and get a bit of a, a difference between the, the yellow of the shrubs and the black of the volcanoes. Um, I've included this one because this is part of the learning process, because the sky was very kind of white to the eye, but there was detail there. So this was a bracketed three, um, 
uh, three image brackets, uh, then mixed and combined together um, with masking or luminosity masking to, to bring a kind of HDR, subtle HDR effect. So there was some detail in the cloud. Um, so yeah, without that, it was kind of just a, a, a kind of a bright sky. Um, so that's the story behind this image. I just liked the starkness of the image and the kind of mirrored shapes between the little hump and the mountain in the background. Okay. Well, I admire your, your uh, photographic uh, to go through with multiple images and then combine them by hand. Yeah. But yeah, there's a reason I put this in as well. That I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quite self-critical if I can. I'm not 100% happy about it. And, and a few of the guys noticed something as well that perhaps your advice on this would be good is there's a slight it seems like a glow or halo around the mountain side which I'm not sure is as a result of the um the the, the uh, blending that i did but that's the only aspect of it that i wish was a bit better the sky area if you like well you 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 could mask the mountain all right yeah. And then uh, with five V's, I just put a control point here in the bright white area and slightly dark, and it'll, it'll take that glow away. But the glow is so very minor. Um, and truthfully, you, you, a lot of the images that we take like this, you, you, you can get a glow even mm. on a single image shot. Um, but when you're combining multiple images, your chances go up. Mm. Um, but honestly, it's not distracting. It's not in your face. And I, I admire you in that you can bring out what you consider to be a fault. Um, but I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay. Um, I, I truly don't. Um, the one thing that I do notice um, are the colors and the stark contrasts between the yellows of the vegetation and that black lava field. Um, that just literally leaps out and grabs the viewer and drags them in. Okay. Yeah. Um, how much time did you spend working this? When I was there or after? No, when you were there with the camera. Oh, ages. I was there. My wife was sat in the car and I was there for, well, I, di I did it with my film camera as well. So I've got, I don't know what the film version of this looks like yet, but I took the film out. So I was, I would reckon an hour I was spent here in the rain, in and out, <laughs> laying Call on the floor, trying to get the composition right. Uh, did you work it in color or black and white? I, in, when I was there in color, specifically because the, it's the a, because the snow has just gone, this yellow color, it's not autumnal. We don't get that in the autumn. This will be bright green now. Literally, the bright green in the bottom of the volcano will be bright green now. So the color of the yellow was what I wanted to get specifically. Okay. All right. Um, well, well, I, I realize that you're probably on a slight hill. It's probably going downhill from left to right. Hmm. Um, but the angle of this line um, makes me tilt my head every time I look at this, trying to straighten it. Okay. Um, and you might consider uh, taking this image and making this line a little bit straighter. And I know it, it humps up here, but even from this point here to this point, which will tilt the image to the left slightly. Okay. Um, which, which, such a little tiny change will be drastically received by your viewers. Okay. okay. Um, also on this plant, if you could move this or recrop and take off a little bit of this side, mm. maybe a little bit of the bottom coming across here to make this, this huge anchor point in the corner. I've got about three different crops of this one. And this was the one that I picked, if you like. I've, even, I've got about 10 different images where I've moved the, the plant in relation to the mountain as well. It's something I've, yeah, the composition of it is something I've been playing with and, quite a lot. 
The reason I say that is is where it's placed now. The the plant and, and the coloring is just uh, amazingly beautiful. Has become the, the central subject of the entire image, rather than this volcanic cone back here. Mm -hmm. All right, and yeah. I don't know what your intention was, um, but I'm thinking it was the cone, or was it the yeah. plant? It was both. It was to bounce between the two a bit because of the similar. There's like a little mini cone with a big cone. I don't know. That was what oh, I think. Okay, that's good then. Um, then, then consider taking off a little bit of the left side, a little bit across the bottom, and a, a bit more of the right side. Okay. Going for more of a square format so that you can, you can get this cone here and this cone here, but have them larger so that they're, they're really in the viewer's face. And I think that that will vastly uh, improve uh, this image. Uh, okay. I, Truly do, and not saying that the image needs improving. It is a marvelously powerful image all on its own, okay, and, and these suggestions are nothing more than um, nitpicky thoughts. No, that's good. It's, it mirrors what I was thinking, so I, I like to hear that because I, I think I don't know how many variation crops I have of this, but I've done. I created maybe five virtual copies trying to get the right cropping framing and, and it, it, it yeah you know i'm i'm thinking something like this all right yeah yeah i have one in fact i may have a i, I may have actually taken that image with that framing as well because i moved around a lot so i may actually have like a full res without needing to crop if that makes sense and by doing something like this we're we're um creating this diagonal too across these two cones going from left to right yeah um but i love this this is a very powerful image i i think you you did a marvelous job in creating this thank you good but what do you think between these two differences yeah i i know what you mean i this is this is the this is the image in the critique that I put in here because of that. I'm I'm not 100 happy with it for some reason. I don't, I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe it was the halo. Maybe it is the crop. Um, I think it needs a bit more work. Yeah, maybe. and like I said, that this line here, just make this portion of this line straight. I'm trying to think why I didn't do that or why it isn't. Well, it's probably because this is how it truly is in nature yeah well this is a big rise on the left it rises up to a plateau on the left and then drops down yeah but what i mean but see we're not creating news news images you're creating uh, fine art so you can do anything you want to these and i'm not saying that you need to do it just consider it okay yeah no i'll do that i'll have a play with it okay wonderful image i love I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, what did the group think when you presented it? What do you think, what did you think, group? <laughs> I think that, that I, they mentioned the halo side of it um, around the mountains, a few, a few of the guys could see that. Um, but I think it was pretty well received generally. It was, it was, I think I, I was quite critical of the sky in my first opinion of it when I first had this this image done i was like i wish there was more to the sky but it was all i could do to bring out that in that in detail as well i've been quite self-critical on this image, you can tell. i think i think that we all liked it mm -hmm. you did such a great job on putting the three images together and like i said that slight halo that's an that's a very very easy fix mm. just mask the mountain and put a, a control point here in Vivisa in the in the bright, it's gonna be right next to the mountain. Yeah. Okay, and just slightly darken it. I'll and then get over to the side as well, and that halo will disappear. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see what this looks like printed quite big. I think it is quite an ominous image. This is, this is very much what Iceland feels like to me. This is kind of the drama we get here. Yeah. And if you printed it on a metallic paper, That'll even mm. further enhance it. 
Okay. I've got some. Yeah, no, this would be a great image for, me, for metallic. I'll try that. Okay. Nice work. Thank you. Tough act to follow. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, this is the one I, I looked at the most before the Hangout. Tell me about this one. What I want so to know here is what was your intent? Very first thing, what's the what's your central subject and what was your intent? The house is the subject in this location. It's, it's, I had it in the last critique with the snow, you may remember, but it's a very famous location um, that was shot around Iceland. But my intention was I wanted to shoot a different perspective of it. Um, so on the trip that I took this time, um, where the snow went, I wanted to get down to the little harbour that's at the bottom. So before when I took this image, it was up to the left of the sea stack you see in front mm -hmm. and looking over the traditional view. But I wanted to get lower down because I knew there were sea, these sea stacks were there. So um, I went down to the harbour at the bottom and uh, I wanted to I wanted to basically smooth the water out, which is this is the sea here. So I used a ND filter. I think it was a six stop. Okay. Um, and I blended again, I think three images to get the sky. But, but, but I wanted to create a different viewpoint here, kind of with the house peeking out from behind the sea stack with the, the eye kind of being led from the sea stack at the front to the one on the right and then to the house and then the mountain in the back. Um, this is a deliberate framing of this in terms of composition as well for me. I, I, I spent quite a long time there as well, figuring out the framing. In essence, I could not go any further left um, because there's a road there and it is ugly. Um, and I didn't want to come any further back because there was a load of fishing boats just literally at the bottom of the frame. Um, so the, 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 the composition of this is quite intentional that that sea stack on the left is, is kind of there and in your face a bit, if you like, with a house a little bit hidden and tucked away in the nature behind. Um, and and that was I wanted to create the atmosphere that was there. It was a moody day, so the clouds were hanging over, and it, and you can't see the glacier that's normally on the right behind the on the mountain and the right. Um, and this very much created the atmosphere of the day. Okay. All right. Well then. All right. So your intent was for the house to be the central subject. Uh, the exposure is amazing. Uh, again, your technique and your skill at combining the three images by hand is impressive. Um, I understand about the road over here on the C stack. Normally in a situation like this, where you have a partial subject, not fully enclosed within the frame, I would tell you it's either all in or all out. Mm -hmm. you know, Obviously, your view requires this. Yeah. Um, but from a viewer, from a viewer's point, um, and in my imp impression, when I'm standing here looking at this beautiful image, and it is beautiful, all of the components come together. The C stack is the main subject. Yeah. The house is supporting, which you wanted it to be the main subject. Um, yeah, and then, well, I wanted yeah. the eye to lead to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, it just all of these components are just so perfectly placed. Um, the clouds are lovely. Uh, very moody. Uh, you, your thought of smoothing the water out was simply perfect. Uh, the colors are nice and sharp. Um, but I would again like to make a uh, a suggestion for your consideration sure i think that we'll start right here and we'll recrop this to something like this all right Hold your thoughts, okay? Um, we still have the sea stack. We still have the wonderfully smooth ocean. The house is more 
than it was before. Um, it's it, it's still central to the image, uh, but we can tell that you're trying to tell a story looking around the C stack and in between these two. Mm. Um, there's less um, non-needed material around the side and across the bottom. Let me move this. Uh, it's not going to let me move it, sorry. Um, and I might also just suggest increasing the brightness just a little here on, on this, this grass. Okay. So that kind of matches the, the, the brightness here. And adding a little bit brightness and structure in these rocks here. Because yeah, these... I watched burn that quite a lot. I mean, I, I made them darker a little bit just so it wasn't quite so it, like... Um... My eye got stuck there when it was a bit brighter before. And, and that's a good consideration. But in the other version, the stack was the central subject. Mm. And the house is nothing more than some supporting piece in the picture back, way back, back in the background. Uh, the rock is still in our face, but we're showing less of it now. Okay. And we're separating it less because we've cut off some of this water underneath it. And we've got this open window that we've created this frame for with this stack and this stack. And we achieved that by taking away most of this empty space on the right-hand side. And even though this is still central, our eyes automatically are going to the house. Okay? And yeah. the pr processing on this field here in this house are just lovely. You couldn't have done that better. Oh. Uh, Another thing you could do to, to slightly improve the centralized vision mm. is to increase the, the, the saturation on the colors on the side of this peak. Okay. Bring yeah. up those colors a little more, and that'll help further draw the viewer's eyes uh, around the stack and right to this house and the colors behind it. Okay. Easy, simple, 30-second fix. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, tell me what you think about these suggestions. Does it fit within your vision? I think the in, I think the uh, increasing the saturation and, and draw to the house, yeah. Okay. But I'm not so sure about the crop for me. Okay. I, kind, I, I liked the shadow or the reflected shadow of the um, uh, of the of the rock, uh, the, the sea stack. And in fact, now you mention it, it was more of the subject ultimately with a house kind of peeking behind it. Perhaps I, I, I miss kind of thought this through a little bit, but I don't know. I think the crop with the, I find that I, my eye goes off a bit more left as a result of the crop as it is. Whereas with the hump as it was, if you like, with the two peaks originally, if you can't, if you can sit, oh, you can't quite see it. That's just, but I just, just the crop maybe needs for me just maybe slightly changing. I agree, but I'm not sure. Well, like I said, you know, it's your artistic vision. Yeah. And all I can offer you is the viewpoint from somebody looking at your image and reacting emotionally to it. Yeah, of course, and that's I think that's important. I think what did I? I also left. If you see on the right there, there's a little like little islet as well. I kind of left that there as a diagonal line as well so maybe it's just the, the crop as it is now but it, with a bit of tweaking it would, i can see what you mean i can see what you mean where is it okay here's the original all right and like i said the house is just lost yeah I, maybe i kind of wanted it to hunker down a bit like that because everything else is kind of around it i guess maybe that's more what i meant mm-hmm do you know and what I mean? The only way I could think of de-emphasizing this as the main and only subject in the image was to take part of it away. Yeah. All right. And all of this space down here, this this is truly dead space. Hmm. Could I crop in even higher up, maybe, even from the bottom? Yeah. yeah no, you could do anything you wanted. I, I just think that this image is so powerful that you should play with this multiple ways, different ways. Explore this image because there's so many different pictures in this single image that you can do a lot with it.
Yeah. Okay. Um, but I do think that this needs to be de-emphasized a little because okay. my eyes are drawn right to it and I'm just skipping everything else in the image. Okay. Yeah. Even taking the bottom off here a little will help stop that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, I wish I was there and had this in my own portfolio. This is just a lovely capture and a lovely scene. A good location. But as you said, this was done from a series of, of stacked images to get the sky. Yeah. I, I personally might be too lazy for that. <laughs> the, the problem with the sky here at the moment, I, I mean, if you don't do it, I'll show you. If you, I don't know if you can see my screen very well. but Oh, I'm I can't just, see your screen at all. Oh, okay. Well, if, if anyone can, the, the sky outside without doing anything, even now is exactly what we have. It's just kind of white and and features, but there is there are features in there. So it does need that. That's when I say these have been hard work. It's it's kind of you get to a place like this and you haven't got golden light. You haven't got the perfect situation. So you have to try. Well, I've been having to try and pick this detail out of the sky. Yeah. Uh, no, you did a magnificent job on that. That 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 was very worthwhile. It was worth the effort and the time. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next one. So, I've I, th this is this is actually I would say my favorite waterfalls in Ice in Iceland, but it's up until this visit, I've really always struggled to photograph it. Even since I was in my teens, and I'd go here. This is a, a, a waterfall called Hraunfoss or the Lava Falls, and basically it's a, probably about eight hundred meter long waterfall, wide. I mean, eight hundred meter wide waterfall with the uh, water coming out of a lava flow. So it's very much a place which is shot um, wide. You know, I mean, super wide panoramic kind of image images. Um, but it's, I've been there a lot and it just never kind of works. I've always struggled. So on this trip, which was the same trip as the last two images, uh, we went here on, on the way back through and I wanted to focus in on the details um, or some details within the falls themselves and, and, and kind of try to capture the, some more close-up images um, of the waterfalls. So uh, I saw this, um, this was taken with a 70 to 200, I saw this from the other side um, of, the water, of the river, this is a wide river, and zoomed right in um, and saw this line of the, the small waterfall in the front leading back to the waterfalls in the background. I thought it would make a good image in black and white. It's a very colorful waterfall as well. There's a lot of distractions here. So my intent when I was taking this was to make it all about the moving water, the black lava, get rid of all the color of the shrubs and the, 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 the yellows and the greens and stuff that's there and make it kind of quite graphical. Um, so I came up with this and I can't remember the shutter speed, but it was just enough to have the movement in the water. So, yeah, it's a waterfall. I haven't done many waterfall shots, despite this being a place full of waterfalls, since I've learned to do photography a little bit better, I suppose. So this was the first one that I was, I've been very, I've been more pleased with, if you like, since learning how to do photography better, <laughs> if you like. All right. Well, you did a, you did a, a wonderful job on this. Waterfalls typically don't take a real long exposure. Uh, no. Three to ten to fifteen seconds is usually enough. Okay, I I, I like the crops. I like um, the composition. I think you've done exceptionally well. The water is just smooth enough to, that I can almost hear it and feel the the, the spray mm -hmm. when I'm looking at it. Uh, there aren't too many super blown out areas you are going to have some when you're doing waterfalls you can't get away from them but i'm only really seeing one and that's more than acceptable for a shot like this i too like your choice of black and white this really works quite well i used the po just on that i i deliberately used the polarizer 
this this location is 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 a pain because it's very windy there as well. So I wanted to have a long enough shutter speed to be able to capture the movement. But also, I, 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 when I was there, I decided to use the polarizer because the rock faces on the right um, without it were very reflective and it was very white. Um, so I had, just as an ad, ad, addition, I did that deliberately on there as well. So it's just one of those learning to use which filters work in the right conditions because it was a very bright day as well. Okay. All right. Now that works. Um, I, like I said, I like this. Now, remember how you just a minute ago, you said this was just too white because of the reflections. Mm -hmm. So you, you put polarizer on it. Yeah. Um, I would like you to look at the bottom of this image. And, yeah. And tell me, can you think of any way to improve this so it's not so black and we, we lose ourselves in, in this total blackness down here that if we had cut it off here, Huh, come back to me. If we had cut it off, I can tell you, yeah, I, I did that. I made that darker in post. <laughs> huh. Okay. Um, well, it, it was a conscious thought on your part. Yeah, and it was to draw. It was, it was to draw a little bit further into the image than than kind of uh, just added a little bit more kind of drama more centrally it was was what I was trying to not a vignette but it was right. I think I, it, it I, does create drama you're you're absolutely right doing that created drama but what actually happens is you've got this image full of wonderful shades of gray and these stark white waterfalls and what happens yeah. is this really dark area it sucks our eyes down to it I spend more time here in this in this L shape than I do anywhere else on the image. Okay. But I'm not saying to make it go away because you, your thought about it is indeed correct. Okay. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying to make the black go away because that tr that is true to what you said. Mm -hmm. But oh, why did I do that? I'm sorry. Let me it's guess. No, I know what you, I know what you mean. It's I, I I that I did do that. I think in light. I think I did it in Lightroom with a ND. You know, one of those ND filters you drag sure. up. Sure. Right. And, and like I said, that's fine, because the black does add moodiness. Mm. But it's so totally black that it draws our attention to it. Up here, you notice our attention is not being drawn to it because it's a nice mixture of black and white froth in the water. Mm. You have that same froth down here. If you leave everything as you did it black, except for just a little bit in this frothiness, okay, here, just yeah, good just a, 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 a tiny amount, a tiny tiny amount of brightness to these white areas, hmm. like that, it's balanced. Now, now we'll turn this on and off as soon as it finishes processing. Okay. Um, having this, this little area here uh, is more than enough. Let me shift this image over. Is more than enough to take away that deep, dark black, but yet the black's still there. It yeah. still adds the moodiness. But now it, it becomes more of a water movement scene with that black moodiness. Mm. Okay. I agree. Um, that is the only suggestion that I would make to you in this. Keep those dark, rich blacks. Yeah. But the areas where it's white, just slightly accent those. I believe that. So that. Our eyes aren't drawn here and we're stuck in this dark area, this dark corner. Well, the eye now can follow like the the waves into it a bit more as well. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing those waves now. Yeah, I see. I, I as a as a viewer, I like that a little bit better. Yeah, I like that. Now, you know, as as the person talking about your images to you, you know, all I can offer are my own insights into this, and what I think adds appeal or removes appeal. Yeah. Okay, but it still has to fit within your view, your um, insight into the subject as you were standing there. Now that's now that's fair. I, I think that looks good. Like uh, I think it looks improved with what you suggested. I agree. Just a little tiny thing. Mm, I like it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll do that. 
Let me shift over here. Oh, apparently I skipped. Oh, there we go. We'll make him go away. Again, another image that I wish I would have had access to. I love waterfalls, James. Yeah. That was really special. Oh my God. Tell me about this guy. <laughs> well, this this was this is again on the same trip in May. It was a productive little trip. But um this was an unplanned stop, totally unplanned. Uh, there, there'd been, we were going back on the main road around Iceland from the west, um, but there'd been a big accident. So the tunnel under this fjord where this is was shut. So the police made us go around the whole fjord. Um, it was horrible weather. It was raining. It was miserable. And I said to my wife, I said, well, once we're here, I know there's a, an old army base, um, British army base with, a, with some wreckage and a wreck here. Uh, so to see if we can stop there and, and see if I can get some pictures and some images. I've been here before. I've scouted it before, but I didn't really. I've never really. I've been intending to go back. Um, so anyway, on this day we went down there, and 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 I went out with my camera um, down to the pier, and it was a dramatic kind of sky, if you like. <laughs> the weather was, you know, there was rain flowing in, and and the drama was all happening kind of in the background. Um, but I saw this this kind of this, the pier is kind of broken from the land where I'm stood out to where it's kind of broken into the water. Um, and it's kind of stands alone off to the right, if you like. It's, it should be attached to the land here. Um, but this was kind of, uh, it reminded me of an arm gripping onto the, <laughs> gripping onto the, onto the seabed, if you like. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to capture a, a very, what's the word? Like not industrial, but kind of a bit, is it steampunk or something like that? Is that the right kind yeah, of thing? That's, yeah, steampunk. Okay, that works. That kind of idea. It was a very... Um, this is Iceland, and we don't really have this sort of thing here. So it's a bit different. So I wanted to capture a bit of drama. The colour of the the pier is this rusty red. Um, the framing of this, I spent a long time here again doing this. I wanted to freeze the motion in the water. Um, so I, again, you, uh, I've done three, three exposure blending here. Um, I framed this so that you have the, the rusty um, girders pointing in from the bottom left towards the pier. On the right, the two little stones doing the same. And I wanted to keep in this, I don't know what this wreckage is on the right on its own, um, but I wanted to keep that in there. So it kind of leads you into this ominous central claw um, with this light behind it, basically. So this is about this is about drama for me. This image and a bit of a menacing kind of image, okay. but also it's, rust, it's rusting away. So it's kind of gripping on, holding on. This will be gone at some point soon, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. This is a location you should include in your tours for right here. Yeah, it's very very powerful. Good job. Single image. No three, uh, two, three. I think it's three blended. Okay. All right. Good job on this. Um, you have a lot of empty space over here that is unusable. And if you hold your hand there vertically, you can see that the crop, if you would crop that out, that it improves the pier, but you lose these girders down here. Yeah. And I like the fact that you've got these girders. Um, there is a simple thing you can do here to make this uh, a little less drawing. Okay. Come down to these girders and increase the, the, the color and the brightness a little bit of these girders. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just a little bit more than you've done. Um, and probably um, structure alone will, will be enough to do that right here, just on the girders and then put anchor okay. points around them so it doesn't affect the water. Yeah. And by bringing these out, this they become more of a continuation of the pier. And all of a sudden, there's a reason to have this, this extra space over here. I see, yeah. This is a wonderful image. I just, I love everything about it. I'm not even suggesting a crop or anything. Just brighten these girders in the water a little bit. Yeah, I used a polarizer for, because I saw the girders, but I wasn't getting it as I was taking the images. So I used a polarizer here as well. <clears throat> yeah, no, this this is lovely. 
I actually gave up on this location and went back to the car. And I lost the eyepiece on my camera. I was getting fed up with the rain because it was really raining. I, was, I couldn't get a clean image without water on the lens. So I went back to the car, which was five, ten minutes away, and found that I'd lost my eyepiece. So I walked back to retrace my steps, and then the weather cleared up enough to do it. And I came back, and I did it again. Oh, so it was good that you lost the eyepiece. Um, yeah, it is. I'm, just too, I'm curious as to what it is. That um, thing on the right. Did you? Yeah. Did you try brightening that up just a little bit too? It was brighter, but it was distracting when it was brighter. So I've actually darkened it a little bit deliberately because okay. I, want, I, I wanted the brightness literally on the front focal point. The I'll finger, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I would do the same with these girders underwater, okay? I'll do that, yeah. Yeah, this this is a lovely image, man. I I like everything about this. This would be really nice on canvas. I've printed, I don't, you can't see my screen, huh, can you? I'll show you at the end, but I printed it out. Well, it's come out really nice, actually. Okay. I've got it on an A3. All right, so let's go here. Wow, what a nice abstract. Tell us about this. <laughs> I had to include a woo-woo. I've done quite a lot of woo-woo since the woo-woo level. Oh, that's um, scary. So I, I, I had to inc include an abstract in this, but... Um, this was taken down at our local harbour here in Hatton the other, which is, and it was on the National Sailors' Day. Um, but it's an image of uh, the front of a ship that was moored to the moored to the harbour. Um, but it was a bit of a boring image, and I was kind of trying to make it work. So I just decided to just have some fun with it and put it in analog effects and split it up, move it around, and jigsaw it kind of back together to kind of create this this feeling so you kind of can see that it's a boat and there's the rope holding it there um but it's now become a an abstract image and, and kind of woo woo <laughs> another woo woo to add to it all right can i ask you i mean the rope here is is bending around this this edge right yeah uh what's what's going on here it's it's three it's the images split into the image was originally split differently and i've moved oh I've you cut the image apart and put it back together and yes, yes okay yep and this is designed to drive you crazy i think was the feedback that it was driving everyone else crazy when they looked at this which is why i put it in this was kind of the sixth image if you like yeah the this, critique this, this than was driving me nuts on the right only because i'm trying to figure out how you did it <laughs> And that's kind of why I wanted to do it. I almost wasn't going to tell you, but I thought, yeah, it's kind of meant to be left to figure it out. But I would probably, you'd probably name it something for people to think about. Yeah. I'd like photography on LSD. <laughs> no, I like it. Uh, this, this is a, a wonderful creation. Th this must be a join line here with the blue and the white. Yeah. If you, yeah, I'm trying to figure out which way I've, I, you don't even remember? No, I'm trying to remember how I moved the image. The one in the middle is relative to the one on the right. It is a join line. These are three. Yeah, it's the same image split up. Of course, it's a join line. I'm just trying to, I framed it so that you have lines. So on the right image, you have a zigzag Z. If you look at just the right image, the mm -hmm. central image, you have like a cross with diagonal from bottom right to top. And then the left image is just a simple line across, but with this. This white mark as well so there's deliberate kind of choices with the shapes in each third james this is an amazing creation <laughs> Thank you. It, it really really is that this this is marvelous um i'm not going to make any suggestions on this at all well maybe one maybe brightness up a little down here yeah okay and a little right here, just a tiny amount. So okay. I, I find myself wanting to see more here, but can't, but you know, maybe that's a good thing too, because it, I, it opens I, up the imagination. I thought about making this three images, you know, you could have pictured them like three separate images that you could maybe print and have, have along in a line, but I decided to join them instead yeah. with the rope. You know, that might be a good idea too, to do a triptych. Hmm. And have the three images hanging on the wall. Yeah, that's why I was. I, that's why I initially thought 
think it might it could work like that with the rope because the rope would still travel between i think yeah yeah no this is an amazing woo woo creation good job thank you i'm stunned that you that you did this and presented it and it is so perfect i'm glad you like it um, the, the other guys are all still muted they can add in what they think maybe afterwards but they it was driving them crazy so i liked it that's why i put it in <laughs> good choice good choice all right next one okay th this is included for a couple of reasons this is this i want to demonstrate that i've learned something um as we've been as we've been doing doing things together um over the months so i actually went out for a specific um intent on this day to go and, and photograph some geothermal hot springs over at an area um uh, near wh where i used to work which is out in the mountains and it's just opened up again after the winter and to be honest with you it was frustrating i spent sort of three four hours out there hiking about um i've taken quite a lot of images that aren't very i'm not very happy with and there was meant to be lots of color and hot springs and so on um, i've taken some film images anyway the, the, the drive is a road that runs parallel to the main road, road one. Um, and as I, I gave up basically to come home because I wasn't really getting anywhere. So as I came over the mountain on the way back um, and came down into the valley back towards the city, um, I looked over to where the parallel road is, route one, the main road around the country. And, it, and this light and this um, atmosphere and this stormy weather was just was just hanging over the over the mountains, over the other side of the valley. So I decided I wanted to stop and capture it. Um, and in terms of learning what, or sort of learning from, or how I've learned over, over being part of the group, I, I, I stopped and initially got a wide angle lens on and bung that on and trying to capture it all. Um, but that wasn't working. So I was trying figuring out what I could do. So I decided to try and stitch Put my 70 to 200 on and stitch a nine image panorama together um, to capture the whole wide scene because i haven't done a big grand landscape properly for a while so i stitched stitch nine images together um and th th there's two reasons for that i wanted to get the overall sense of the feeling of the scene which is the, with this drama and you see these mountains but i also want to allow for people to look in and play a bit of where's waldo and look at the scene in detail if you want so people can zoom in on the far road and see the road and the tourists going out of town you can see a quarry in the distance um on the if you go left a bit there's a quarry you can see details when you start this one of those images which you can start to, you can look at as a grand landscape but once you start to look you can start to see how small everybody is compared to these huge landscapes here as well so you can see the road going off in the distance the power lines mm -hmm. so the idea behind this one is to show a grand landscape show that i've learned that you know i can get a different lens out and create a big image from some close-ups um and also to show that you can also have to spend some time zoomed in looking around at details and spend some time in an image and that is it really and capture the atmosphere of what this this is summer in Iceland, really <laughs> okay all right what i'm looking for are stitch lines yeah and i'm not finding any good <laughs> um and you know when you when you're stitching together a panorama a lot of times the software will give you stitch lines especially if you're not careful and lock your exposure so it's the same for all nine shots yeah i did that uh, this um, is lovely this is exceptionally well done this is um, an amazing stitched pano I, I, I love the moodiness you, you've got you've got these um <clears throat> horizontal lines and we're going from dark to light to dark to light to dark to light to dark and it, they're, they're they're the stair steps that draw us into it visually and allow our mind to walk through the image um this is this is very powerful james this is so well done that it's scary <laughs> um panoramas are hard they they really really are yeah they are um especially if you're working digitally uh, i do most of my panorama 
panorama work now on on uh, medium format film with the six by twelve format camera. Yeah, and this is not this is very well done. Um, the move three by one, I think. Say again. I think this is a three by one panorama in terms of aspect three, ratio. Three, three and three three three. No, it's, it, no, it's in terms of the actual crop. It, I've cropped oh, okay. It. Yeah, sorry, the aspect ratio is three by one. It's it's uh it's quite wide for me. Did you um you you, you flip the uh, the camera to the vertical mode and then shot nine across? Yeah, that's right. I used the, I've got a geared tripod head, um, mm -hmm. so I leveled that and made sure I created and then I was able to incrementally. I think every is it fifteen degrees or nine degrees i can't remember what i chose but i did it so it was stitched properly. so you didn't have a lot of waste above and below not no not really no no it was pretty this is pretty much as i mean the original i can't even remember what the original it's like 90 megapixels or something ridiculous yeah. no the, this this is exceptionally well done uh, the colors are muted the, you have dark moody areas I mean, this you, you look at this, and all you think is this grand vista with this amazing storm and, and shadows and light playing across the image. Um, this might be one of the better images of today. Uh, yeah, not, not discounting that woo woo, but <laughs> this is exceptionally well done. Thank you. Okay, I really, really like this. This is a satisfying one as well. I think it just shows that, you know, I might have given up with what I was planning to do, but then this was totally unplanned. It was just the conditions, the timing and, and so on. So yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this one and I like looking at the details and the cars. If you look carefully enough, you can see that I've captured the same vehicles as well as I've gone and panned around. There's a couple yep. of the same cars driving along the road. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's quite nice, so I left them. Yeah, no, this 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 is very well done. Uh, this would be great on metal. Uh, ah, okay. a huge metal sheet. I'd like to see what this looked like printed big. Yeah, like, yeah. This like, is, good on metal. Like, is there anybody in Iceland that, that, that prints metal? I don't. I don't know. I think there, there will be. I don't know where though. It's quite specialist. I know there's a guy who's got a big roll printer, but it is he's, he specializes in in more um just standard print roll rather than anything okay. material wise all right here we go am i back now yeah you're back okay you know those were exceptionally well done images uh they're everything i expected from you okay and of course it's it's my job to point out little nitpicky areas yeah of course um but overall, this this was a very, very well done set of images. Uh, congratulations! Thank you. Uh, you you're oh, yeah. moving by leaps and bounds. It's just scary. <laughs> okay. It, it, it is. Thank yeah. you. Very well done. Uh, so this was a good job on L fifteen. Thank you. Now can you see me again now? There's that there's the print of that one by the way. Oh okay. Yep. Yep. It comes out quite nice. I've done that on um matte uh like fine art paper, smooth a smooth one, not too much texture. You might want to try that on metal too. Yeah. Uh, you know, metallic paper. Yeah, I will do. Um, but uh no, this was well done. Um I expect way more from you now. That's good. That's you fine. Cut your throat here. Um, well, I work. This was a real. Yeah, I worked. In terms of hard work, this was hard work. In terms, not not a chore, but it required a lot of a lot of effort and everything I could think of to create the images with the conditions here because it's not been easy for to, for photography. Still no, not now. You, so. you can tell that you put a lot of effort and time into this. Uh, yeah. You really can. Well, you guys, what do you all think of all of this? Come forth. I'm quite amazed. I think that I wonder if James could do that pano and get it into a gallery somewhere in Iceland. Yes. Well, yeah. I, 
I'm part of the film association here and they've got an exhibition in August and but they need it needs some level of analog in it they can be digital images but there needs to be an analog process in it so I, I was wondering what I could try and put forward to something if there was a way I could do any of my digital works my film stuff isn't ready for that sort of stuff yet well, I don't could, know you could send you could send the the image off and have it printed on, on an analog system that's why I wondered if I if there's a way to do that. Yeah, there there there's a place in England. There's a couple places in uh, uh, Taiwan. I mean, all over. Uh, there's places that you have access to. Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, there's there's lots of uh, digital to, to film processes out there. Okay. Maybe I'll try that. I, w I wanted to submit something, but I haven't really got any of the film stuff, which is what they traditionally submit submit to that sort of thing so yeah i'll have a think about that i like this i do want to print this image big though okay well you guys this is your opportunity to speak well i was talking about a commercial uh gallery may be interested in that pan up oh, for yeah sure. maybe yeah there's a, there's a few of those in town actually i mean they wouldn't mind making 50 percent off of that Right. 60 by 20. That'd be a great, great, great look on that. Something like that. The great, that, that panel was incredible. Well, I was thinking way bigger than that. Really? Yeah, about five feet. Five feet? Yeah. Literally, there was yes. There was right. there. Big. Big. Yeah. <laughs> That's this last trip, I was a restaurant would want to put up on their walls. If you don't like that idea, <laughs> how big's five feet, Mark? Like in, in English, <laughs> five feet is five times. Well, okay, uh, four feet. No, yeah, no, no, I'm just trying to think of how big that would be in two, uh, two meters. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that would be that's big. what you were getting at. You damn people on the other side of the ocean, you just have all the wrong measurement systems. We invented them, though. <laughs> yeah, like A1, A3. What's with and, that? Yeah. <laughs> you have the resolution on the image. You need to print it big. big. Yeah. And that's like, something a commercial establishment would love to have on their walls. For people to just to look at the details like you want them to look at. Especially a lobby of a business. Yeah. It would be gorgeous in there. Thanks. Another idea is an artist co is an artist co-op. They don't take as much money either. That's true. Okay. Sixty by twenty would be the minimum size I would print that. What'd you say? Sixty? Sixty by twenty, five by Five by, you know, three, right at three. Oh, yeah. I thought you said 16 by 20. No, no. <laughs> so we were talking about. <laughs> no, it needs to be a big pano. And, and potentially a bigger. I cleaned my ears out. For That's nearly you, uh, you have these grand modern style homes. That's perfect for someone who has a modern style house, too, because they've got massive walls. Yes. Yeah. And that would fit great in someone's living room. Beautiful. We could wall. we could hold a we could hold a sixty. We could probably on our short wall hold an 80, 80 by thirty. Easy. So if you'd like to send that our way in that dimension, <laughs> we'll 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 let you know how it works. <laughs> You'll but be his gallery, right? Certainly. I mean, it's five foot is not that big in a well for homes here it's not that big oh, no. I, I sell uh, uh, 80 by by uh, 50 uh, sized images all the time <laughs> James is getting out his uh... yeah you have to tape measure <laughs> yeah and even I would even consider bigger bigger yeah bigger than that yeah, I think bigger actually. Yeah, I mean, 
What is it? If it was six, it'd be six by two. Yeah, that wouldn't. That would be an interesting cut for that. I don't know how this. I don't know if it would compress into that measurement. If if twenty four is big enough for that. Twenty four. You, yeah, that would be, that would be that's tw yeah, 24 is a good, 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 quite a good height, actually. Yeah, that'd look quite good. Big, longer than that, James. <laughs> I think even longer. Longer than that, long I got out. <laughs> James, you get that's, longer. That's the kind of photograph that an interior designer would use also, because if they're creating a look in a house for a client, they want to put something dramatic on the wall. And with a modern look, everything is so stark, lines are so straight. This would be the the thing that brings in the color. And this mm. would be the thing that kind of balances everything out and softens the room. Now, listen, you could even take that one step further. You could turn this into a huge triptych. Yeah. Or even more than three slices you, you go and that's the hot thing in the united states right now with interior designers so i would put a portfolio together and send it out to interior high-end interior designers in the united states yes okay. that absolutely to, yeah, Jerry, that's a very good awesome. suggestion or travel agencies travel agencies places like that where people are walking in going oh, i want to go there okay that's helpful. I don't. I wouldn't know where to start with that. But I'll, yeah, I'd like to. That sounds like a, a good idea. Oh, we could start with a gallery in in Reykjavik. Yeah, there's a gallery just run down the road from us here, which does exhibitions and and things. Which I'm kind of itching to try and get in there with them, but I don't know who runs it yet. Go walk in. Go go eyeball it. Walk in and see how many panos are in there. I guarantee you, you won't see many panos in that size. And no, that no. picture, that picture you could easily run to 96 by 36. And that would be, you want to talk about impact. That's my, you might as well be standing in the scene. Yeah. I can tell you what the resolution is exactly on that thing. I can't remember, but it, it's ridiculous. Um, I, I think, I think you certainly could pull off. 60 by 60 by 24 60 by 30 It's 16 and a half thousand by five and a half thousand pixels Converted to centimeters or inches on uh, It'll do that Click just to the right of the click where it says pixels and change the units On where? Are you on under image in Photoshop? I'm in Lightroom. Lightroom. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to go to Photoshop. Okay. I'll go in. I'll just quickly have a look. But yeah, okay. Anyway, it's a big, it's a big image. I'm glad you like it. There's a lot to like. Yeah. Sometimes you'll be surprised how many really giant images you can sell. I find they're extremely. <coughs> Extremely popular. That's interesting. I mean, I I always used to with the old APS cameras, the what you know, the pano film things in the in the day. I, I used to love doing panoramics back then, but I haven't really done much of them. The landscape here does. It just is panoramic most of it. See, um, which is why a lot of it is detail focused for me when I'm focusing on details. <laughs> the the next thing I see in your life. It's panoramic film. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> no more new stuff. Exceptionally good group of images, James. I'm very proud of what you've submitted. Thank you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the broadcast here. Hold on.